Um, okay, well, Andrew, if you're ready, take it away. Yep. Sure. Thanks, man. Okay, so uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Gordon. I'm the academic lead here at Prolific. Um, and today I'm just going to be talking about uh, what we do at Prolific to essentially ensure high quality data from our sample. Um, so just to begin with, though, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time introducing the platform for anyone who's not that familiar with it. So a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, so, oh. so Prolific is a platform for online data collection. Essentially, what we do is connect either researchers with motivated and engaged participants around the world, uh, essentially to enable you to get nice high quality data as fast as possible. Um, and I'm sure some of you have used MTurk before in your research. We consider ourselves the scientific alternative to MTurk, mainly because we're built by academics and we're largely aimed at academics. So just in advance of getting into the meat of this talk, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of a demo of what Prolific can do uh, and just introduce you to the platform. So, so what I've done is I've signed up as a new researcher on the platform and I've clicked that I want to begin a new study. And so we're going to run a study today asking uh, people whether they believe Donald Trump's going to win the next uh, presidential election. So what I've done is I filled out a bit of study details here at the top with the title, a bit of description of what we're doing. Uh, down below, I've provided a link to my study. So just a bit of clarification, Prolific uh, connects you with the participants, but we don't actually host any survey software on our platform. Um, we link up with essentially any survey, survey platform in the world. So Gorilla, Qualtrics, this one's on Typeform, but any custom survey software you might have, we're able to link to it. So I've uh, input the URL of my study there. I've received a URL which will direct participants back to Prolific to receive their credit at the end of the study. Um, then I'm asked to say, who, who do I want to actually see my study? And we've got three options. The first is a representative sample. So this is something quite new on Prolific. Um, essentially what we do is in the UK and USA, because they're our biggest markets at the moment, we can stratify our sample by age, sex, and ethnicity. Um, we also have the option to apply custom pre-screening. So I'll, talk, I'll show you that now. Essentially, you can pick a, a whole bunch of different information about your participants to get you a really niche sample. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But for today, we're just going to say, I don't mind. Everyone on Prolific can see it. Uh, we've got 125,000 participants who this is going to be sent to. So we're just going to ask for 100 participants. It's a single question, so it's only going to take one minute. We're going to pay them 13 pence, which works out about £7.80 an hour. So once we've checked, we've checked all that works. We're going to click Publish. Let's go through this quickly. And now what Prolific is doing is sending this out to every participant we have. And we'll come back to this towards the end of the talk. And I'll show you how we're getting on. So like I said, um, Prolific is really built by academics. So uh, with me today, I have Katia Dharma, who's our CEO and co-founder. Uh, she's a social psychologist and started Prolific in 2014 uh, while studying for a degree, uh, a doctorate in social and experimental psychology at the University of Sheffield. Uh, Jim Lumsden is going to be with me later in the speaker's corner at 5.30. He's a growth analyst here at Prolific. Uh, he's a methodologist and he has a PhD in psychological research methods from the University of Bristol. Um, I've already introduced myself. I'm Andrew. I'm the academic lead. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist by training and also have a PhD in cognitive neuroscience from the University of Bristol. So since 2014, we've managed to connect over 17,000 researchers with over 200,000 participants. And those researchers are from either from academia, so for instance, we've got Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge here, or from industry, like the World Bank and Measuring You. Um, and really our vision is to basically provide or, or create the most trusted platform for research online. And the way we aim to do that is by following our kind of three core values, which are openness. So we encourage transparency in everything we do. Trustworthiness, which means we really want our participants and researchers to put their complete trust in us to give them high quality data and to treat them fairly. And thoughtfulness. So we believe that everyone should be re uh, fairly reimbursed for their times. So that's why we have a minimum of five pounds an hour payment for participants. Um, and in terms of what we offer that's kind of unique, uh, we think there's kind of three really key selling points of Prolific uh, that stand it apart from the competition. First of all, it's really quick. So most studies are completed on Prolific in, a, in about two hours, but many are going to be completed in about five, 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's really flexible. You saw earlier the opportunity to do uh, representative sampling, but we also have 150 pre-screening options. So whatever your sample is, it could be incredibly niche. We should be able to provide it. 
And finally, data quality. So this is the main kind of uh, point of my talk. Prolific really has a massive focus on ensuring uh, that, we, that, that we give you the best participants possible so you get high quality data. So what do I mean when I say best participants? Um, uh, we have a framework which is called the NEAT framework here at Prolific. And we believe that the best participants are NEAT participants. Um, so what does NEAT mean? Well, the N stands for naive. So I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, the concept of naivety, but it's participants who are essentially unfamiliar with your experiment, the measures and the question. Um, and while this may not, this isn't necessary for all kinds of research, indeed, there's some kinds of research where you don't need to be naive at all. Uh, we think it's a pretty important point for participant quality. The E stands for engaged. So um, engaged participants are those really motivated, stimulated and thoughtful participants that give you good data. The A stands for attentive. These are the participants that pay a lot of attention either to your task instructions or within the task and their responses are therefore really meaningful and uh, at high quality. And the T stands for trustworthy. So this is probably the most important factor is that the participants that we're providing with you with are who they actually say they are. Um, so that's kind of how we conceptualize a good participant. Obviously, if they're lacking on any of these, it's a bit of a threat to um, the reliability of your results. But how do we actually go about curating our participant pool to uh, really boost up these aspects? Well, in terms of naivety, we do um, a whole bunch of things, but I mean, way up on the list is like computational methods to ensure naivety. So we have something called adaptive rate limiting on the platform. Essentially what that means is for these really popular studies, we give a lot of priority to the participants who have completed less studies recently. And also in the pre-screening options, as the researcher, you actually have the option to select participants based on how many uh, submissions they've recently done. So if naivety is a concern for you, that's something you can do. And just to illustrate uh, how naive our participants are on Prolific, uh, this graph shows the percentage of participants making X number of submissions a week. And really the takeaway here is those first two bars show that about 50% of our sample are making less than three submissions per week. So how about engagement? We believe our, our concept of fair treatment for participants actually does a lot to foster engagement in our participants. Um, but also when a participant signs up to uh, be on Prolific, we give them what we call the demo study. And they essentially run through this kind of study we've made up. And we can use some of the questions in that to look at as a proxy measure for engagement. So for example, they might be asked this question, they're asked to pick two superheroes, provide a bit of free text response saying a little bit about the backstory or the info behind these superheroes. What we can do is we can look at those responses, we can look at the detail and the length with the idea being that more engaged participants simply write in better detail and with more length. Uh, in terms of attentiveness, we publish a lot of guidance for um, our researchers on how to ensure attentiveness in their study. Um, a lot of this revolves around including attention checks, making sure your stimulus is really, really interesting. Um, but again, in our demo study, we actually have questions that can measure participant attentiveness as well. So just after that superhero question, they're immediately asked, which two superheroes did you pick? It's a pretty easy question, but you know, a participant who's not going to get that right is probably not paying that much attention to the study. Uh, and finally, trustworthiness. So we have a whole load of features we do to basically ensure the participants are who they say they are. And we're really proactive about removing any anybody we consider to be a bad participant from the pool. So I'll just more on that in just a second. But as an illustration of the level of trust we have at Prolific, this graph shows the percentage of rejected submissions over time. So a submission is when a participant completes the study, they come back to Prolific and the researcher sees that they've completed it. The researcher can choose, I'm either going to approve this or I'm going to reject it. And we can see that since July 2016, so over the last four years, we've had this steady downward trend in the number of rejections, so that we're actually at a, a level of about 0.75% rejections at the moment, or uh, the way I like to put it is we're, we essentially have an approval rate over 99%. So I mentioned that we remove all the bad participants from our platform, um, but what exactly is a, a bad participant? We tend to think of bad participants as falling into a four, a one of four categories. The first would be bots. So I'm sure you've all heard about the, the problems uh, that places like MTurk have had with bots recently. Um, we have a number of checks such as IP and ISP address monitoring, um, the requirement to have a phone number to verify your account, um, as well as having a sophisticated research or report system. Uh, basically all these, uh, there's quite a few others as well, but essentially they really limit the possibility that bots can get onto our platform. 
So in terms of the non, the actual human participants, what makes a fraudulent participant? The first, we, first type of fraudulent participant, we'd say are truth vendors. So when a participant signs up to our platform, we give them a whole load of screening questions. Uh, and essentially that is so we can filter them when you want to pre-screen them for your study. Um, and we can check the responses to those questions, basically looking for participants who say yes to everything, or they say they've tried, bought, and experienced absolutely everything. Usually they're doing this with the intent of just being um, available for more studies. Um, so we do, we do frequent kind of checks on that data to make sure that we're not getting participants who do that. The uh, third type of bad participants are just the cheaters. So uh, liars, they will lie to, uh, truth vendors, sorry, they will lie to get into your study, whereas cheats just provide bad data once they are in your study. Uh, this might include, you know, having a pen and paper by the side of the computer when they're doing a memory check or, uh, or perhaps they just don't understand the, uh, what you're asking them to do or think their reward is tied to their performance. Either way, the data they give is, is bad in the study. Uh, one of the ways we check for this in our participant pool is to include pitfall screener questions. So all the participants that sign up with Prolific are asked the same question. They're asked, are you aware of the Crispin-Buxley phenomenon? Uh, and we find that about 1.8% of our participants do say yes. Um, but of course, th there is no such thing as the Crispin-Buxley phenomenon. So anybody who's saying yes, they are aware of it is likely to not be telling the truth. Uh, and find the final group are slackers. So these are the participants that are just really unmotivated to give you good data. There's a whole bunch of reasons why that might be the case. Maybe they just, um, they don't feel like they're being rewarded fairly for the time or they're watching something on TV while they're completing your study. Um, one of the ways we can actually check for this is look at for each participant, how long their average submission speed is. If their average submission speed is really short, uh, it's likely they're probably just clicking through studies as quickly as they can. Um, just to get to the payment, uh, or their, their submission speed is very long, it's likely they're probably not paying much attention to the study. So I hope that's given you a kind of a little brief uh, introduction to some of the things we do at Prolific to essentially curate our participant pool and make it more trustworthy. Uh, the things that researchers can do, however, um, there's loads, loads that researchers, researchers can do. Some of the top things I would say is including things in studies like attention checks. Um, attention checks are gonna catch out your inattentive participants, they're gonna catch out bots. Captures are also gonna catch out bots. Uh, free text responses are really versatile. Uh, if you put a free text response in, you can catch out the unengaged participants, the inattentive participants, the slackers, the bots. So it's really good to have them in there. Um, but also having really precise methods, pre-registered methods for how you're gonna clean the data once you collect it. Um, second, you know, we really encourage all our researchers to uh, report to us any participants they think are suspect. The quicker we know about it, the quicker we will actually do something about it. Um, third, uh, pilot your study, make sure you get feedback. That's probably the most important thing. You need to iron out all the kinks before you actually put your study on Prolific and start collecting data. Um, so just in conclusion, I hope I've managed to show to you that uh, online research has the capacity to provide really fast data. So it basically gives you the chance to have this really fast iteration between theory and evidence. Um, it's also incredibly flexible. So, you know, you can create, uh, you can essentially access samples that you can't access with undergraduate populations. And that at Prolific, we really do everything we can to basically ensure that our participants are of the highest quality so that you don't have to. So just before I finish, I just want to check in on that demo study and see how we're doing. Let's just refresh here. Oh, let me just unpause. Sorry, just one second and they should start coming in. Unfortunately, I think that was paused during it, but you can see live now straight off, we're getting a lot of participants really quickly. So we won't follow it. It looks like we're going to be probably around 50, in the 15 minutes of this talk and we can actually check directly uh what participants were responding let's just have a look okay summary so it looks like it's bad news for donald trump it looks like he's not going to win the next election we had 66.7 percent of people think no he's not going to win election it's probably a good thing um, so yeah, I hope that gave you a bit of an introduction to um, what Prolific can do and how fast it can collect data for you. Um, with that, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if we have time for questions now, but uh, 
think there'll be questions at the end of the, the session. We're also going to be available at 5.30 um, if anybody has any questions they really want to ask us. And finally, just to make you aware, if you haven't used Prolific before and you're thinking about using it, if you sign up with this code I've provided at the bottom, you're going to get £40 or $50 worth of free Prolific credit. So sign up. So. Many thanks, Andrew. That's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, again, it was really impressive and it's lovely to see the convergence between a lot of the speakers even from you know your perspective you know running prolific versus theirs in terms of running experiments it's yeah. nice to see the alignment is is really so tight as you said i think that we're going to have to defer questions to the speaker's corner and we'll um 